Hello, this presentation is titled Graph Neat Examples in Raku. Set 1. My name is Anton Antonov. Today is July 19th, 2024. I plan to have at least one more set of uh, neat examples with graphs. So what are neat examples? We can say that a neat example is a concise or straightforward code that produces compelling uh, visual or textual outputs. Maybe we know neat examples when we see them. The neat examples showcase uh, Raku programming, use functionalities of different uh, Raku modules and give interesting perspectives on uh, what is um, computationally possible. These uh, three statements which I just recited um, they overlap, so maybe two of them are redundant. All right, so my first example is the so-called mod graph. So I have taken the integers from 0 to 99, and each integer is being squared, and then the reminder of dividing by 74 is being found, so mod 74, and then the graph is being produced, and here is how the graph is visualized. All right, so let me uh, try to untangle some of this here. So uh, the graph has multiple components, as you can see uh, what is uh, happening here. I'm using um, a function called uh, gsd3 graph plot, which is from the Raku package JavaScript D3. And um, JavaScript D3 uses uh, the JavaScript library D3GS. D3GS has the force network functionalities. And so you can see here the force, if I say, decrease the, the strength of the charge, we don't get uh, a very informative plot, or if it is, uh, the charge is positive, you know, it's like uh, not informative at all. So if I return to, to say the original setup I had here, we get something more meaningful. So other elements of the force uh, can be adjusted, like say collision and link length and so forth. All right, so I'm not going to, to play with this too much, but yeah, you can see what um, uh, we have the force and we have al also this kind of manual adjustment. We can manually adjust uh, the graphs if we wish to do so. All right, so uh, next I'm going to find the weakly connected components of the mod graph. Uh, so let me explain here. So 92 is connected to 28. This is a directed graph, right? But 28 is not connected to 92. But in weakly connected components, if uh, there is, a, there is a, uh, an edge, then the, the nodes are considered connected. So this is what is happening. Weakly connected components returns the largest components first. So this is what we see here. So next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, um, uh, let me zoom out. I'm going to take this uh, weakly connected components and for each of them, I'm going to take a subgraph corresponding to the vertices of the component and then produce the JavaScript code for the plot. And so, and then concatenate those plots. Actually, this might not be very clear when I say concatenate those plots. So, um, so this uh, function, gsd3 graph plot, uh, produces JavaScript code. This uh, notebook, this is a Jupyter not notebook, uh, actually a Raku chatbook, it is uh, primed to display JavaScript uh, D3.js uh, plots and I have this um, uh, GS magic cells and when JavaScript is, gener is generated as an output then automatically the output is uh, rendered JavaScript wise. The, the, the JavaScript is being executed. So this is what we see here. Right? Okay, um, so for each of this uh, components, I generate uh, the corresponding um, JavaScript code and then it is being concatenated. You can see it here with join. This is what is happening. All right, my um, next example is a dictionary graph. So I'm uh, taking uh, approximately 85,000 uh, English words from the package uh, data generators. Uh, that package has the, the um, function random word. And so you can see I'm producing random words here. And uh, this, um, this 85,000 words data structure looks like this. The keys of this, um, of this uh, dictionary or, or hash, um, the words, the English words. So I'm going to take uh, from those, uh, those words, I'm going to take the ones which start with uh, RAC, with R-A-C, right? With this prefix. And we have uh, 46 uh, words like that. 
From this um, 46 words, I'm going to create a nearest neighbor graph. So for each word, I'm going to take, um, like say, racket. No, I'm going to take the top two nearest neighbors, and I'm going to use the distance function called DLD, which stands for the Miru Levenstein distance. This is from the package text uh, Levenstein Demiru or something like that. <clears throat> and so here is the graph itself, and here it's uh, how it is uh, visualized. You can see that I highlighted the word raccoon, the two different spellings of the word raccoon with two C's and one C. And you can see it uh, here. So um, instead of using uh, instead of using uh, nearest uh, uh, neighbor graph, we could have used uh, the function nearest and um, make the edges ad hoc how it how we did it for the mod graph, right? But you know. Uh, these functionalities nearest uh, nearest neighbor graph were provided by the same package ma nearest. All right. So my next example is um, about building an interstate uh, highway system that joins the geographical centers of uh, all African countries. So here uh, I am assigning uh, in a very direct ad hoc manner the coordinates of the different um, African countries. So this is how it looks like. So. So I have this almost planar graph, it seems, and the task is to find a subset of this network, which is first connected and second is with the minimum length. So we want to minimize the amount of um, route infrastructure work uh, being done. So this is uh, how this, um, uh, the, that network looks like. So let me uh, put the cities into uh, city labels to none. Uh, so how this was found? This is in, in orange. This is a spanning tree. So there's a function called, uh, sorry, this is a method of uh, the graph objects called uh, find spanning tree, which, you know, finds the minimum uh, spanning tree based on the lengths or weights of the edges of the graph. So uh, an interesting element here is that this is a different way of visualizing the graphs. You can see what um, uh, I'm using vertex coordinates. If I don't, we get something pretty meaningless uh, here. And uh, even if I adjust with the forces, uh, play with the forces, it, it's not more informative. So here, uh, using vertex uh, coordinates is uh, uh, is crucial and it's very helpful in this kind of um, this kind of visualizations for this kind of tasks. I think you can see that I'm uh, highlighting separately. Uh, they separate specifications for highlighting the edges and highlighting the vertices. So if I remove this, right, so this here is just going to highlight the edges, right? And uh, if I if I if I remove this part here, we we only have uh, okay. Let what happened here? Let me see. Yeah. So we only have the vertices. So. None of this is uh, is that helpful. I mean, we want to have uh, both um, uh, both the edges and the vertices uh, being highlighted in this particular case. In some cases, we only want the edges. In some cases, we only want the vertices. All right. So I was wondering, should I discuss the Bulgarian cities? Um, so here, this uh, uh, in this uh, example, I directly assigned the coordinates uh, for the countries. But it would be nice if these coordinates are known by some RACU package. And this is what uh, the purpose of this uh, RACU package uh, data geographics is. Is to provide uh, data for different uh, geographical uh, entities, be that countries, cities, and so forth, right, regions. And so you can see this uh, package, it doesn't know, it only knows one African country. It knows approximately a dozen of countries. So here I'm going to take the um, uh, Bulgarian cities which uh, have a population more than 10,000 people. And I'm going to, uh, so you can see the cities uh, there with known uh, latitude and longitude, with known coordinates. This is provided by the package itself. And so here, when I create the graph uh, and the minimum uh, uh, spanning tree, you know, that's, that's kind of um, utilizing the, the data from that uh, package. All right, so this was it. Thank you.